Welcome to the Biz Bash podcast, where we make biz strategy a piece of cake. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Cammie, but you might know us better as Eliza and Calligraphy and Cammie Monet. We want to help you, our fellow stationers, artists, and calligraphers, confidently build a profitable and personality-driven creative biz. We're here to share our honest-to-goodness advice and actionable strategies for ambitious artists. So put on your party hat, quit being a procrastinator gator, and let's get this party started. Hey guys, welcome back to the Biz Bash podcast. Today is episode 11, and we're talking all about live art events for artists and whether or not they're right for you. I have done a couple different art events um, live throughout my artistic career. (laughs) This is Elizabeth, by the way. And it's been an interesting journey for me um, because my thoughts on them have changed over time for sure. But lately, I've actually really enjoyed them. And I get DMs and questions all the time when I'm out doing these events on how to even uh, do a live art event or how do I get approached for one, who provides the materials, all sorts of questions. So we're going to be getting started on that topic in uh, just a little bit. But first, Cami is going to read a review for us. Okay. So today's review comes from Rihanna and Hare. I hope I said that right. And her review (laughs) says, thank you. Cami and Elizabeth are such generous creatives. Their online resources and now this podcast have been so helpful as I dive into the world of stationary design. I appreciate their realness and how they offer information and insights in an approachable way. A rising tide lifts all boats. Preach, sister. We are so excited. <laughs> we totally so excited. Yes. <laughs> totally agree about the rising tide lifting all boats. I mean, not just for Rising Tide Society, but we really do love helping out other creatives. And we're really glad we could do this with you guys in the podcast. So, um, and it's just so much easier to answer these types of questions that we get in our DMs over here on the podcast. So, yes. Um, uh, yeah. So Elizabeth has done a lot of different live live events where a brand is asking for a calligrapher to basically come into the store, do some personalization. I've been approached to do this as well. I pretty much always say no. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the different um, ways you can be approached, what the event actually looks like when you get there. Because if you haven't done one, you might be nervous about you know what actually happens and how much to um, charge and how you get paid. So, so Elizabeth, yeah. tell us about some of the brands that you've done a live events for and where you've done them. Yeah, I've done them uh, a few different times in the past year. They're by no means what my business is built upon. Um, you guys probably know by now, I kind of have two pillars of my business services. So invitations and envelope calligraphy and biz birthday bash. But the one other thing that I will occasionally do is a live art event. If it's the right environment and something I'm interested in. So that's the key thing first, that if anyone ever reaches out to you, you got to think to yourself, is this something I actually want to do? Because for me, yeah, for me, it's changed over time. Like when I first went full time with my business, I was like, I have no desire to leave the house, to do this, to talk to people I don't know. And I was just in such a different frame of mind in fall of 2016 when we went full time um, and just didn't understand how it fit into my business. And I knew that wasn't what I wanted to do. So I think I made the right decision at first, actually, like not taking them because once something becomes a habit in your business, then it becomes harder to cut out. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I did do one like really early on for heart guard. Actually, that's like the pet medicine. I don't know. I was about to say, is this like a pet thing? Because I'm so confused right now. (laughs) Yes. So heart guard is a pet medicine for dogs. Um, I honestly can't tell you exactly what it does, but I had a connection with the planner that ran this corporate event. I think through Rising Tide Society, actually through the Atlanta meetup um, way back in the day. And she had reached out to me and was like, do you want to letter, gosh, ceramic coasters or marble coasters for this event? Yeah, I think that's what it was uh, with people's names on them. So it was actually me, one of my best friends here who is a calligrapher. She doesn't live here anymore, but she did at the time. And then another local calligrapher as well, maybe like 40 minutes outside Atlanta. And so the three of us got paid to like sit at this table <laughs> and write people's names on these coasters all day for, well, I guess it was like two hours straight of this. And for this live art event, there was 
no stop time. It was like, once we started writing names, we were not done writing names until the event was over, which actually isn't how all live art events are. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So that was my very first one. And I think I got paid. I think all of us got paid $100 an hour for that. So we each made $200, uh, which a corporate company has more than enough funds usually for their events to be able to pay people pretty well. So don't be charging people like $25 an hour for live art. Uh, You should be valuing yourself higher than that. But that was kind of my first experience. Um, was there anything I left out? Um, no, <laughs> that I don't I think touch so. On? Um, let's talk about. Well, I did a live event as well, similar to this, where I just did names. Um, this wasn't for a brand, though. I think I talked about this in an earlier episode, but I was really nervous about doing it. And it was for a. Well, I guess it was a brand. It was for Orange Blossom Bride, which is a local magazine here for wedding um, vendors and um, and for brides. And I was set up at the door and as people would come in, I would write their name in calligraphy and had my stuff all set up all cute, you know, with invitations. So it was kind of like a networking thing for me as well. But originally she had asked me to do um, art prints, five by seven art prints with any phrase that someone wanted to write. And I just did not feel comfortable writing, you know, a five by seven piece of paper. Like it could, it, there could be right. so many words that go on that. So I was like, let's just do names and name tags, which worked out really well. So I really enjoyed that. And it really fit within like, the type of events I would do and what I offer because I was able to control like the t- like the style of things like it was just me writing names the way I do them um, with m- with brush calligraphy on watercolor paper um, and the reason I've said no to other brands that have asked me to do these types of live events and the types of live events we're talking about you guys are like when you see you'll see other people on Instagram who are like oh I'm at you know I don't know. I can't even think of a brand right now. Tommy Nordstrom. Th- I'm in Nordstrom <laughs> today and I'm doing calligraphy. And you're like, how in the heck? They must be so famous. And honestly, like these stores are like desperately looking for calligraphers. Like they have no idea where to look. So that's the type of events we're talking about. So I've literally turned down. I turned down Tommy Hilfiger twice. Burberry. I, I feel like I'm not saying that right. Um, they wanted no, to- That's right. Burberry. Burberry. Oh, such a weird brand name. Anyway, so I've turned them down. <laughs> twice. I've turned them down twice as well. And Neiman Marcus, I think I turned them down. And then a couple of different open houses for planners. And I normally turn them down as, be- as um, because I think they want pointed pen calligraphy. And it's not something I offer. Like watercolor is not going to work on leather, really, or, you know, hand lettering style. And that's just not necessarily me. So I always am recommending and referring other calligraphers in the area. So I always see they end up going and it's fantastic. And I don't have to do it. And it's great. So, um, yeah, they have a hard time finding calligraphers. Let's talk about how you got found and how other people can get found if they want to do these types of live art events. Yeah. For sure. I mean, you're right. These corporate companies are looking for this a lot because they do promotional events, especially around like Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day. They're trying yeah. to get people in the Any store. Holiday. Today. Christmas. Oh my gosh. Yes. yes. They're definitely looking for people. So I did uh, at Christmas time, like a couple weeks uh, before Christmas this past year, 2018, a five hour event for Neiman Marcus. They paid me 150 an hour, guys. And so that $750 was some great extra like Christmas pocket money, essentially. Yeah. Um, And so that was like I made that decision to do that event at that time of year on a Saturday. Um, It wasn't during the week because I the payoff was enough for me and I enjoyed it. They actually like fed me too. It was awesome. They were having a buffet that day for the employees and they were so nice. They were like, go in the back and get some food. Like we'll, we'll sit at the table while, while you go eat. I was like, this is awesome. (laughs) But anyways, these companies have found me because of my website and because of my SEO, because I think they're going and searching Atlanta calligrapher, Atlanta calligraphy, Atlanta lettering, something along those lines. Like they're definitely not searching live event artists. I don't think they would even know to call it that. (laughs) They're using like the most basic terms possible to find people and then if they start with someone like Cami, she then refers other people so I've been referred for events before too for like similar reasons of I don't think this would be a good fit but would you be interested in doing it um so it's either kind of that word of mouth or mostly a website so just making sure that you have keywords on your website that'll let you 
people find you based on location. That's super key um, because they're always searching based on city. Exactly. They're totally looking based on location. They're not just typing in like fine art calligraphy. They're definitely typing in the name of the city and calligraphy or, you know, hand lettering or whatever. So having those types of keywords on your website, if you want to get found for these types of things and you want to do more local work, super important. And then of course, location specific hashtags on Instagram as well. So tagging hashtag Orlando calligrapher, or hashtag Atlanta calligrapher, or whatever your city is, is going to be super helpful too. I think Instagram is becoming even more of a search tool um, with those types of hashtags. So definitely utilizing that as well if you're trying to get found. And of course, you guys, you can always reach out yourselves. Like if you see these brands that are doing these kinds of things with other um, artists, maybe you find the one in your city and say, hey, I am a calligrapher. If you're looking for something for a live event, I would love to be considered. Here's more details about my style, blah, blah, blah. And everyone's happy. Then you just did the research for them. Maybe now they'll even kind of try to create a brand based on the fact that you they'll have a calligrapher. So don't be afraid to reach out and put yourself out there as well. I mean, yeah, Neiman Marcus, Last Call, uh, Tommy Hilfiger, Burberry. These are just a few of the brands that we've named that you can look for that are local to you to do vice versa, (laughs) like reach out to them instead. Kendra Scott um, uh, designs my Laney. She just did one with Kendra Scott, I think. um, Okay. And then I know West Elm does a lot of local calligraphy. Like they're very big on promoting local people. I actually reached out to West Elm and they told me no. And I'm like, what the heck? You guys have my friends there. Like you have my other friends who are calligraphers there. Why don't, why can't I come? (laughs) They're like, no, we don't want you. Sorry. I'm like, all right, fine. I don't want to go there anyway. So I got rejected, but it's fine. It's fine. See, I reached out. It's fine. But (laughs) they might have just already had their people. If they're like, we have our five go to people. (laughs) It's okay. My friend um, who actually, her name's Andy, she does stuff there and she's like it's not even it's not even worth it like no one comes and I'm like all right fine <laughs> yes oh my gosh that's the perfect segue that we should talk about next okay of like <laughs> expectations versus reality for what a live art event looks like because yes guys you gotta have a backbone for the fact that this could be super awkward because <laughs> sometimes you are literally just sitting at a table by yourself in the middle of the store and everyone's walking past you and you're not doing anything I did a Mother's Day event and I think it was three hours and I think I did one the entire time like what? that's not a joke <laughs> yes and uh, it was like Neiman Marcus last call downtown Atlanta um and yeah there were just first of all weren't that many people in the store that day they'd even brought like a DJ in and everything who was like playing music it was oh my gosh supposed to be this like event and it was like the DJ and me in like the middle of the store and like no one else there it's kind of like an awkward movie where you watch the scene and you're like is this really happening right now but actually living it in real life so but you're getting paid regardless so you know I'll I'll sit somewhere for three hours (laughs) oh absolutely no complaints you just have to be prepared for the fact that like maybe if you have an iPad I did that for my last Neiman Marcus event as I brought my iPad with me that way I could be lettering on it during my downtime because if people see you doing something they're actually kind of curious so they're more likely to stop and ask like what are you doing or what are you offering instead of you just like sitting there and twiddling your thumbs (laughs) if nobody's Yeah, coming to you. Um, what were you doing for them that day? What kind of, or I guess you only did one, but what did you do? <laughs> yeah, well, this was Neiman Marcus last call out in Lawrenceville this past December for five hours. And I was lettering on leather goods. Uh, okay. So I have special leather paints, guys, that I use so that it's permanent because the last thing you want to do is go to one of these events and letter something for somebody and then have it fade within a week or it comes off because you just use Sharpie. And I know it's Sharpie, but it doesn't stay on certain things. So <laughs> um, And that kind of leads into like who provides the materials for the event. This is something I get asked all the time too. And it really varies from place to place. But the majority of the time I'm providing the materials because I like having the control and knowing exactly what I'm using. And then they love it too because they're like, oh, well, that's one less thing we have to think about if you're already bringing the things that you like to use that are trusted and reliable. Um, So I kind of have my little kit of things now, like leather paints and certain paint pens and stuff that I know can be used for live events, depending on what I'm doing. So are they, when you say you're providing the materials, 
you're they're not like buying a leather purse at the store like you're wait hold on let me get this straight you're just bringing like your pens and stuff and then lettering on a product that they have purchased at the store or sometimes sorry if that was confusing like the supplies used for the actual lettering or artwork I always bring and then it's usually at the store they're purchasing like a purse or satchel wallet whatever it is that I add lettering to what Um, happens if you mess up (laughs) like if they just bought this wallet that's why I think there's a lot of reason why I turn it down. I was like, what if I mess up this super expensive wallet, writing their name, misspell something, I don't know, get ink everywhere. Like, Right. Like, I've yeah. done, I had done tests previously for a lot of the leather stuff to try to understand how long do I have to wipe this away before it dries. So a lot of times, Smart. like with leather paint, if you get to it fast enough, so like make sure you have Q-tips and paper towels on hand and like a little glass of water. Because if you get to it fast enough, you can pick it up and wipe it off. It's like once it dries, then you're kind of doomed. Um, and so... <laughs> like oh, that's, maybe, that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of doomed. No, that luckily hasn't happen for me um except there was I will say there was one lady when she wrote down what she wanted she didn't write it clearly so I like misread it as something else and it just so happened that it still worked out okay because it was like an initial of her name or she didn't like care um but Neiman Marcus would print out slips that they made they're in charge of this that asks the customer what's your name what's your phone number what do you want written what color ink do you want it in like they were kind of in charge of all of that I didn't have to worry about that because you have to make sure that you're gonna be writing down the correct thing or not misspelling someone's name or (laughs) you know this and that that could happen um so yeah, that, that could so be stressful. super nerve wracking. I just try to go very, very slowly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. See, this is this is why I can't do it. I would just be way too nervous. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay, Not but to at mention, least- yeah, people are watching you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And people are watching you. Like that's the thing. Like I wouldn't care if I messed up if I was just doing it on like paper I brought or like something I brought. I'd be like, oh well, that messed that one up. But if it's something that they just bought, it's like this brand new designer wallet then I'd be like oh my lord have mercy so (laughs) yeah uh, the one thing that I have had happen is sometimes with like the faux leather there's different colors of leather leather wow this is such a tongue twister to say leather so many times but (laughs) you can't always predict how a certain color will dry on a certain color leather so this one guy brought forward this kind of like almost purple gray wallet he had purchased and he Mm -hmm. wanted it was either rose gold or copper I think it was like the dark copper ink but when I wrote on it the hues weren't that different once the ink had dried so it was actually like super hard to read oh my Um, gosh so (laughs) then there's a couple ways to combat that you can either go over it in another color or you can play it off as see how like subtle this is and how it shines in the light like (laughs) I love it just spin it however you want it basically it's all the way it's all it's about the way that you frame it so Mm -hmm. yeah if you don't do well under pressure or you feel super awkward when people are watching you like live art events might not be the best fit. Um, they're definitely a push for me because I'm introverted and I kind of have to be in the right mood when someone approaches me and asks me about one uh, because I got asked to do one at America's Mart, which is actually probably one of my favorites to date because I got a letter on terracotta pots and it was super cute and I just wanted to make a ton for myself. So when America's Mar approached me to do this event, I actually let that email inquiry from them sit there for like five days before I responded because I didn't know how I felt about it. I I was like, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do it? How do I feel about it? Um, So I actually quoted them. I think it was 200 an hour. I think it was even a little higher because I was like at that point where I couldn't make up a could not make up my mind so I was like well if I get paid a little bit of extra 
win-win. So <laughs> see that sometimes that extra money is the difference between the yes and the no. I think we've talked about that in our why no is the best word ever. And if it's something you're like, well, I kind of would do it, but maybe the price point just isn't there, charge a little more because why not? If they're willing to pay for it, then it makes it way more worth your time. Yeah. If they're willing to pay for it and just be prepared that there's actually normally a lot of back and forth negotiation for stuff like this, not on prices, just figuring out actual details for the event, figuring out when you need to be there. Do you need to be there 30 minutes early, which I make them pay me for that time, guys. Like if I have to show up 30 minutes prior to the event, like they're going to be paying me for the time that I'm there (laughs) setting up or doing whatever it is. Most of the time sitting awkwardly in a corner and waiting till I actually start. Um, (laughs) Are they, um, are they set? Do they have the setup ready for you when you get there in your experience or has it been you're bringing a table and all that other crap? Because I would want to be paid more for that too. Cause I hate dragging in all my stuff. (laughs) Every event I've done, they have had a table ready for me, which is great. And they normally have a cute little sign on it. It depends on how organized the business is and who's running it and all of that. Um, The one thing was that when I showed up at America's Mart, uh, this was during like a huge like home goods wholesale weekend that I had no idea existed. (laughs) So it's like America's Mart is already crazy as it is. It's like four huge buildings in Atlanta with multiple floors, multiple showrooms. So first of all, I was like trying to figure out where to even go and all this stuff. And I get upstairs and I get to the table and it's a table that's like in the corner and it has the tablecloth on it. But then the terracotta pots like hadn't been unpacked in any sort of manner. I had to do that myself, which I was kind of like grumpily doing because I was like, this is not my job and why I was here to like unwrap these. (laughs) But they were just like (laughs) running around. And then I was kind of like, there wasn't a chair. And so I kind of said to the girl and I probably said it more cutting than I meant to, but it came out and I was like, I'm going to need a chair. Like I can't let her standing. (laughs) (laughs) um but neiman marcus has always been really great too like they always have a chair and a table with the tablecloth and so that's why i'm saying it varies from company to company uh, depending on what they do but yeah oh my gosh and then we've talked about pricing like making sure you're actually charging for your time and valuing your time because also you got to think too you guys you're still driving and traveling to this event. Like you're not just at your house and like three o'clock hits and you get paid then. Like you got to drive and and get there too. So maybe factoring that in as well in terms of like, are you, is it worth it to you to drive three hours or 30 minutes or however long the drive is too in terms of like the pricing cost? So it's not always just the time that you're there. Um, So you're pricing per, if you're thinking per hour of like actually being outside the house versus, you know, from start to finish, you might want to factor that in as well. Absolutely. I actually, if the place is like a certain amount of mileage outside of my studio or farther than my studio, then I charge an extra travel fee because I'm like, Mm -hmm. this is going to be taking longer. It's the same thing. If you hire a photographer for a wedding and they're out of state, you're going to pay for them to get there. It's the same concept. Um, And you deserve to be paid for that time that you're taking to get there. So I actually forgot to account for this for my Lawrenceville event, which I drove like 45 minutes to an hour or two in like pouring rain. Uh, That was fun. And I was like, how did I, I just like didn't realize how far Lawrenceville, Georgia is actually from Marietta. I thought it was a lot easier to get there. So just like double check on a GPS guys, it would have taken me two seconds to figure that out. I know. Um, See, I literally hate Orlando traffic and all these events are at this like super crowded mall. And I'm always like, oh, (laughs) <laughs> no. If it's, if it's not within a five mile radius, I'm not going. If you have speed bumps to your apartment, I'm not going. Like yeah. I have very strict rules of leaving. I'm just kidding, guys. I'll come to your birthday party if, even if you have speed bumps to your apartment, but still. <laughs> yeah. And in the, well, for um, downtown Atlanta ones, like I always tack on a parking fee too, because I know I'm going to have to park for a pay for a parking garage. Um, Actually, for America's Mart, I didn't get I did not charge enough for parking, which is kind of a bummer. Um, I didn't, I guess I didn't realize how much I would actually need to pay, um, especially because that huge event was happening and parking was limited and yada, yada, yada. But yeah, these are all the things you need to be thinking about to go over them again really quick. Is the price right? 
How much are you going to charge? Can you spend all the time driving and traveling to these events? Who's providing the materials for the event? You got to figure that out. Is it you? Is it them? What's the setup going to look like? And then lastly, we're going to touch base on how the heck do you get paid? (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) Because I feel like getting payment from these types of companies is a little different than sending a client invoice. Um, I mean, any company I've worked with, not not just live events, but sometimes they'll like send me the check and it's like a like an invoicing system and not they don't need the invoice from you up front. But I mean, I'm let's hear what you have to say about it. So I'm not sure. But the company, I've, the companies I've worked with, not live event wise, have just given me a check starting off with like so. Right. The bookkeeping systems for corporate companies are run obviously very different from our small business where we're very hands-on. They're going to most likely have a bookkeeping and accounting department. So the person that you're talking to (laughs) and coordinating with is not the same person that's paying you. They have to forward that invoice and uh, that amount to their accounting or bookkeeping department, which then cuts a check or pays the invoice. And I actually tell people pretty early on now that for payment, I send them an online invoice. I've really tried to push uh, all of my events to be that way so that I can just send it through Dubsado and yeah. have them pay on there. And most of the time, they're actually really happy with that because I don't think they know what to expect working with this small of a business. It's very funny because we don't know what to expect working with a corporate company. They don't know what to expect working with us. So I think they're actually kind of pleasantly surprised when I'm like, by the way, here's your invoice with like travel time and hourly fees and parking, et cetera, all laid out for you. All you have to do is send this to your bookkeeping department. (laughs) And they're kind of like, oh, okay. Like that's easy. Um, and then you you have to decide though, are you gonna want payment up front entirely, or are you going to be doing a fifty percent prior to hold the spot and then fifty percent the day of? Uh, if you go with the second option, the fifty percent final payment the day of the event, just be prepared for the fact that you're not going to be paid the day of. That's just the reality, especially if it's a weekend. Because once again, when you send the invoice, they have to send it to their bookkeeping department who then has to get to it. So you're not going to get that 50% normally till like four to five business days after the event. That's what my experience has been. They always pay me. Um, I've never had a, a company stand me up and not pay an invoice or any horrible experiences like that. But if you are nervous about that, it's totally okay to book these events full price up front because there are such strict guidelines in place for time and all this stuff and the way that you're getting paid, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. And honestly, also, if you want to invoice these companies, you can use our code um, bizbirthdaybash for 20% off Dubsado. Um, that's 20% off your first month or first or first year. Anyway, <laughs> side, yeah, little side totally. change. No, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, Dubsado is great. I use it for clients. I use it for corporate. Obviously, they're both clients, but it's like clients on a, a wedding basis or clients on a corporate basis. Like I, I use it for all those things and they love it. Yeah, they probably just think like since you're a small business owner, like, oh, she must just take like cash and Etsy payments. I don't even know. What, like they probably have no idea how, you know, they're just like have no clue that you can actually send an invoice and you actually run your business professionally. So you can just surprise them and make us all look good by sending Dubsado payment, Dubsado invoices. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, I actually got complimented by the guy at America's Mart. He was like, it was so easy setting this up with you uh, and getting all of this worked out. And he actually complimented me on my pricing too, which I appreciated. He was like, um, cause he told me, he was, he said, we're getting cr- quotes from creatives in the area. And I've never been one who wants to like undercut the market by any means. But he said there were some people that were asking for like 1500 an hour. And he was oh, like, that dang. is just, yeah, like $3,000 for two hours. And he was like, that was just too much for our event budget. I really appreciate your pricing. And I was like, well, that's great because I love my pricing too. And if you guys love my pricing, then win-win. Like, <laughs> Yeah, win-win. I would like Honestly, I thought you were going to say that people were charging like $20 an hour. And he was like, I just can't believe how much they don't value your time. But you went the total opposite direction, which I'm like, who are these people and how can I meet them? Because I want to know their thoughts behind why they would charge that that much 
maybe they didn't want to do it. See, that's probably why. Well, that's, that's something I would do. Big one <laughs> is like when people don't want to do something, they charge super high because they were like, let's see if they'll say yes. Or what he's made them, what he told me is he said, sometimes people assume that since we're corporate, we have a huge, like endless budget to be yeah. throwing our events. And he said, that's just not the case. We still have a budget for each and every part of yeah. the event that I mean, we're hosting. Like getting paid $750 an hour or $750 to do a live event is nothing to sneeze at. Like that's a great, I, you know, I'd be happy to make that um, for a day, but you know, if you're there, yeah, they're probably just thinking, oh, I'll just charge them out the wazoo, three grand. Um, but yeah, everyone, ha- they still have budgets in place. So, right. oh, also, side note, I meant to mention this earlier, but um, for driving to events, you can also count that mileage um, as a tax deduction too. So just don't forget about that. So for America's Mart, when I talk about the fact that I got paid $750 for five hours of my time, I kind of forgot to account driving, which I talked about a little bit, but I did get the tax deductible because I was still driving. So I'm going to report that on my taxes. But just to put this in perspective, I used to charge $500 for a logo design, which was way like so many more hours of work (laughs) than just five hours. (laughs) So that's why for me, it's like, I'm so happy with my pricing of live art, 150 to $200 an hour, right? Because I made the mistake in the past of like way undercharging for services. So I guess in my mind, it makes sense and it's a good payoff and a good reward for what I'm doing. And that's kind of like my thought process on it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it makes sense. And it's really interesting how you say, oh, put it in perspective, looking at other services that you charge or offer. Yeah, like it actually makes so much sense. I think it's a, a good price point, especially I wouldn't, I would not go anything lower than that because you also don't know the amount of work that you're going to be doing. Like, like you say, you did just one thing for three hours, but hey, it could have been like a line of like a hundred people, you know, and you're just like nonstop writing. Like that could, it, it it's kind of like a uh, question mark of how how much work are you actually going to be doing? So I would go for like a slightly higher um, hourly rate than just like 50 bucks an hour or whatever, because you want to account for the unexpected. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's how the heart guard event was for me, the pet medicine event. <laughs> like for, the riding, <laughs> for riding on marble coasters, it was literally from the moment the event started to the moment the event ended that we were all three of us sitting there writing hundreds of names on these coasters. Like the line just went on and on. The oddest story I've ever heard. <laughs> like I just, it's just such a weird heart guard doing calligraphy. I don't know. It just Isn't like, it? It reminds <laughs> me of... Uh, tangled when he's using the frying pan and he's like this is the strangest thing I've ever done it's like (laughs) literally how I felt during that event I was like this is so weird and these people are so excited about getting their name on their marble coaster (laughs) okay serious question though where are their dogs there that's all I care about (laughs) their dogs were not there because these were the the companies that worked for or the employees that worked for the company so it wasn't Uh, for the customers it was for the actual like corporate business boo (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh yeah but I mean that's kind of what I have to say in pitching about live art events I think I covered everything um Cammie kind of covered why she turns them down why they're not a good fit for her but like we always say in almost every episode you gotta evaluate whether or not it's the right fit for you whether or not it's something you want to do it's different for everybody Mm -hmm. yes and if you have any more questions for us you can always ask them at bizbirthdaybash.com slash q and cake um the letter q the word and and cake um we do episodes where we answer faqs from you guys every five, it's five weeks we kept saying every, six weeks but it's five <laughs> every five weeks so if you guys have any follow-up questions about live events and what those look like or something we didn't cover in this episode feel free to ask them there and of course leave us a rating and review so we can read it on our episodes and get found by other creatives on itunes and i think that is it so we got, we will see you next week hopping in your, oh no, I'm doing a weird ending. I'm just going to stop. Elizabeth, end it. Yep. You know, I'm going to say something weird. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you guys for our episode next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> Bye.
Oh my god. Okay. No, hold on. We're gonna cut that. <laughs> we need to redo that. That was way too awkward. Oh god. Um, okay. Do you do you want to go back in? Why don't you start I with the? I... Do you want me to do leave a rating and review? What did I say? I said <laughs> I always get this way right before lunch. Um, Q and cake. Was that part okay? And then I I thought it was, okay, but so. I I don't remember when you started like gurgling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to end an episode. Like they're so awkward to end. I don't yeah. know what to say. Okay, I'll 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 end it because it's close to lunch. Okay, please. <laughs> All right, guys, we loved having you tune in for this episode about live art events. If you have any more questions about live art events or just questions in general for us that you would like to have answered, we actually do episodes called Q and Cake, and these happen every five weeks. So we have four normal topic discussion episodes and then an episode of Q and Cake where we answer about four questions. If you want to ask us something, go to bizbirthdaybash.com slash Q and cake. So the letter Q, the word and, and the word cake, pretty straightforward. And you can leave us your question there and we will see you guys for our next episode next week. They drop every Tuesday early in the morning. Uh, we love hearing your reviews and the things you've written, or I should say reading your reviews. So if you are listening via iTunes, we would love it if you left us a review and a rating on there, preferably five stars if you're loving us. And obviously, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so we will see you guys uh, next Tuesday. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye. Bye.